I, Stephanie Bain, Stephanie Bain, I have a books, books, books. I, I, I'm a book There's just so many books. <laughs> Hello everyone, Stephanie here. Today's video is going to be my review on King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard. If you don't know, this is the third book in the Red Queen series series yes it is not a trilogy which I'm super excited about because I need more I want more now I gotta wait for the next book anyway this first portion of the review will be no spoiler you don't have to worry I'll let you know when I get into the spoilery details uh, I obviously can't tell you what the third book's about because well spoilers but this world this book series is just about a world where there are people with red blood people with silver blood now the people with silver blood have abilities uh, some can control steel and iron others can you know spark fire from themselves and whatnot but the story starts when there's a girl named Mare who is a red blood and they find out that well she has abilities and that's just like the start of it it has a lot to do with like rebellion and rising and then like doing things i can i just say that i fucking loved this third book it was so amazing i think victoria aviar just keeps pushing it and a lot of people say you know the first book has a lot of tropes well that's true it, it is tropey but i feel even in the first book she makes it her own but in the second book, she started making it even more her own. And this book just, like, proved that she, and, like, just cemented and, like, certified the fact that she is making this her own for sure. Not only is her writing amazing, but there are twists and turns in the story. This one specifically, I loved everything that happens. I loved the slower pacing to the story, but it never drags. I loved her writing, of course. I loved the characters and the journey that the characters go on in this. There's a lot of growth. There's a lot of change. You're uh, certain characters are, you know, their more inner thoughts and deeper selves are revealed to us, and I really enjoyed that. It gave you an, a look inside certain characters that maybe you really loved or you disliked before, but I liked seeing that and looking into that. I loved Mare's growth personally. I think out of all of them, she's my favorite because Mare does have this thing where she can get really effing annoying because of certain habits that she has, but in this third book, I feel like she really did just like realize. I was an asshole I'm kind of annoying and she recognizes that and she's trying to correct it and I really do love that about her because obviously I want the characters to grow and to change not change but become better versions of themselves or worse versions of themselves why not the plot is another thing that in this story really just like expands it's a lot more than we thought it was there's a lot more moving pieces to this that there's more people involved and there's other groups involved and there's just so many other things that are going on that expands the plot and it really does just make the story more of a whole also there is an aspect of the story that i love that we don't know why it's happening or what it is yet but i love that it is actively said and not constantly but there's always a point and especially the last book in this one where they acknowledge the fact that we do not have that knowledge yet and that they're trying to get that knowledge to tell us i thoroughly enjoy that because sometimes you're thrust into this world and everything is already laid out for you and now it's just a plot no it's you're thrust into this world but they don't know and neither do we but we're figuring it out together and that's something that i feel like i truly truly one of my favorite aspects of the story quite frankly but again i gave this a five out of five stars i loved the story i loved where it went i was shocked and surprised and excited and i just think that Victoria Aviar just keeps making them better and better. It still doesn't feel like nothing, nothing feels like it's being dragged on. Nothing feels like, okay, we should have already had the answer. No, it just keeps growing in like the scope of everything that's going on. It just keeps expanding and I am so happy. Honestly, that's all I can tell you for the no spoiler section. So if you have not read any of the Red Queen, I honestly highly recommend it. I think it's a great fucking fantasy series. I think it's amazing. And I feel like it's just so good. But if you have not read any of the books, I suggest you click out now. 
So goodbye, no spoilery people. Hello, spoilery people. I loved Mir, this book, okay? I loved that she was with Maven, and I loved that bitch could not use her ability because it's true in the last book, and Mir was the one that really made me remember it when she was recalling it, is how she was treating everyone with the whole going to the notch and getting the people and doing this and doing that. She was pushing a lot of people away. She was kind of mightier than thou type attitude like she thought she was more important and I understand it all these people are put into a very weird situation that she never thought she'd be put in having abilities and having someone you know tear her heart apart aka Maven and all these things so I understood that but I really really loved the fact that she acknowledged that she did horrible things in the last book like to the people that she cared about pushed them away and shoved them away so she wouldn't hurt anyone which is typical I know but in this book I just feel like her growth and her acknowledging it was so crucial for the story in terms of it getting better because I love Mare as a character but she would get on my nerves and these interactions are super important because I still find that her along with Evangeline have some of the best points of views in the story because I we like saw Cameron for example Cameron I do and don't really like her she kind of gets on my nerves I'm glad she was only a few chapters but I didn't really care for seeing the story in her point of view I mean, I enjoyed it because I want to see what's going on with the Scarlet Guard and I want to know what's going on there. But I'm happy that it wasn't more than it needed to be because Cameron did get on my goddamn last nerves. Like, I like you, but like, through other people's eyes. I don't want to see the story from your eyes. You bitch too goddamn much. So that much I did get really annoyed with. I didn't enjoy her character too much. I liked her more towards the end. But again, we weren't reading and, you know, from her point of view. I loved Ev Evangeline's chapters. I think she only had like three. There needed to be more of her. I really love her. I would also really like some chapters from Maven's point of view. That would be amazing. Okay, let me stop getting off topic. Let's go back to when she was with Maven. Is it weird that I still shit Mare and Maven so hard? I like, I like Cal, but at the end of the day, there's things about Cal that it's like, I feel like Mary kind of forgets about. Like in the first book, when the whole thing happens and, um, you know, Maven reveals that he was like spying and like trying to get on the Scarlet Guard for other reasons, not because he cared about Mare or because he wanted to go against his, the silver ruling and stuff like that. Uh, like, I feel like she forgets that Cal was going to have her arrested and because of what happened, his brother and her would have been beheaded or executed because it would have been accounts of treason. But in the end, it was actually Maven who was setting them up and then, you know, Alana, Alara, I always forget the mother's name, freaking what she would call it, she has, you know, Cal kill his father. But I hate that Mare always, I feel like, forgets that little tidbit and the fact that it's like he never really helps them out in any way. I mean, this book he started helping out a lot more, but he is kind of selfish, but like he tries not to seem so selfish, but he wouldn't kill his people. It's like, why are you with the Scarlet Guard if you're not actually going to like do something? All you're doing is letting these people die. He wasn't helping so much in the last book. He was always so conflicted. And then now... In the third book, you find out that he actually does want a crown because his grandmother, finally, they revealed after the whole, like, war when they were trying to take over Corvium, you know, Maven and his, the Lakelanders, when they're in that little meeting afterwards and it's revealed to Cal what they were, like, setting up behind his uh, back about marrying Evangeline and being the king of Norda and stuff like that, even though he was upset, like, he doesn't, he doesn't mind. And I'm honestly hoping he sticks like that. And I'm honestly hoping that they can get someone to fucking Maven. My heart breaks for Maven. He is an asshole, but this is like the first time I've ever seen a villain where like, not only is their childhood like fucked up, no, 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 no. That's not what affected him. His mother butchering his thoughts, his mind, his feelings is literally what made him who he is. That wasn't his choice. It's not like he chose to be a horrible person. The thing is, is he only knows what she put in his head. She, he only knows everything she did to him. So like, he is by far the most redeemable villain I have ever read about. Not that I really want him to be redeemed, but I want him to just like realize, cause I do feel he could be a good king or a good ruler, whatever, but I want him with Mare. Is it stupid? I really want him with Mare. I do. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I ship them so hard and I loved it when like, Mare was with him and 
he would do things and she would just like every now and again have like this little spark of like oh you know the boy he used to be it's like no he's still there like he loves you he's just fucked up because his mom like butchered his thoughts and his mind and shaped him into the way she wanted him to be oh i was <sighs> oh my god the birth of farley's baby I feel so bad because Shade really did break my heart when he died. Anyway, that was just a, like a nice little tidbit. I love the fact that they're the Montfort, like, you know, the free land of Montfort or whatever it's called, is now with the Scarlet Guard and they're in Piedmont and they are making it much bigger and they're more organized now and just like things are happening, things are moving. I love the fact that how Samos, like Evangeline and like her father in them, <sighs> I was, n I was, and wasn't shocked when she let Mare go. I was just over here like, oh my god, she's gonna take her to Maven. I, ha I really did think that. I was not thinking she's gonna let her go. But the moment that the Arvin said something and she was like, oh yeah, we better like take care of whatever. And she, I had just like this inkling. I was like, oh my gosh, she's gonna do something. And she fucking kills all four of them and she sets Mare free. Um, I'm still kind of hoping that Mare will kill Tolly, I can't say Plotimus or whatever his name is, Ptolemus. I hope she kills Tolly. That's his, you know, Evangeline's brother's nickname. I, I kind of am hoping, or that he just dies from someone else's hand. Maybe Farley kills him. That would be kind of cool. Because I like Evangeline. Evangeline a bitch, but guess what? She was also raised like that. But I feel like little by little we're seeing more of her in the story. I feel like she's blossoming into a stronger woman. AKA she badass as fuck. I love her. I love her relationship with Elaine. Even though we only see little bits and pieces of it. My heart breaks for her because she wants to be with Elaine. And it's just like... <sighs> let the fucking woman not be a queen she doesn't care about being a queen so that was just like so heartbreaking and i felt for her i really did because she wants to stop it but at the same time it's like what the fuck can she do it's not like she's gonna kill her dad or go against her dad so like i understand it's tricky but i hope that ends up working out in her favor i hope she doesn't fucking die i don't really mind if her mom dies like her dad i kind of like dig but i like don't dig at the same time um Oh my goodness. And then the end, Mary was just like, I'm walking away. I was like, you go, girl. You do not need to be with him. Like, <sighs> I do and do not feel torn about him being king. I do think he has the potential to be a good king. But I understand Mary's troubles. She knows what he was raised for. She knows that he was meant to always fill the title of being king of Norta. It is Tiberius's, you know, cow's rite of passage it's his like you know if they continue that way but i also understand that she he doesn't make choices he literally just does what other people tells him and like occasionally he makes a choice but his choices are plans of action after the grand choice has already been made you get what i mean so i do feel that he has the potential and everything in him to be a great king but if the majority rules in the favor of keeping things as they are, I don't see him fighting. No offense to Cal. He does not have a spine. He really doesn't. He doesn't have the guts to just do something. And that's where Maven, I feel like, I really do feel he would make a good king. Like, the fact that he ended the war, it's like, it's true, that war... First off, I was shocked about that, by the way. That that war was literally, aka population control for the Reds. I was... I was shocked when like he was talking about it I'm not gonna lie I had to reread that little part when they're on the train and they're talking about it and he was like oh you know there is no war it was not but it all it was was just like okay whatever we're gonna send them to war I was just like wait huh so like there's no real reason for this he's like no I, and then he explained it in a way obviously I, I don't remember wording but pretty much like he they mentioned it was like population control send them to war Whoever survives, survives. But the war was literally pointless. So I am extremely happy that Maven ended it. I understand he has other intentions. He wanted to focus on the Scarlet Guard. But he ended that. And I, I was just so like, what the fuck? Are, like, that broke my heart. I started to get teary-eyed. And then when Mare, like, fucking goes to, like, strangle him, I was like, you go, girl. But, like, sit down because his patience wears a little thin. But I do feel like he could be a good king. If he had what he was born with, I think he would be... 
a top-notch king because Maven has the guts to fucking do shit. Even if people don't agree with him, even if he's fucking scared, he doesn't he doesn't let it show. It's like, go fuck yourself. This is what we're gonna do. When they betrayed him and they were trying to kill him to get the brother on the throne, he fucking got rid of all of those houses that were on like his, what do you call it? Like, you know, advisory team. I That's what I'm calling it. And he sends him away. He's like, I don't give a fuck. How Samos, another house, I don't remember their name. But... Bye, Felicia's to every other house that was against him. And I was just like, good for you, dude. Like, seriously. My heart broke when Nanny died. That literally tore me to pieces. And I'm just like, I don't know what's going to happen in the next book. Are Mary and Cal going to be fighting on the same side and then eventually on separate sides? Th that next book better be like 800 pages long because I feel like it's going to have so much it needs to cover. It really is. <sighs> okay, I don't know how long I've been blabbering for, but I honestly am just like, it was so good. I fucking loved it so much. Like, <gasps> it just made my heart so happy. And again, it has like these Red Rising feels without being Red Rising. Like, there's something about, I think, the style of writing, while it's Victoria Aviar's and hers alone, it just gives me like, ooh, kind of Red Rising feels. And I know it has a lot to do with like the rebellion and little things like that, but it's still hers. Like, there's very very few little parallels and literally it, it's not much at all but i just i love it i cannot wait for the next book i'm so excited comment down below what you thought about it what were your like most <gasps> moments i'm pretty sure i i definitely never go in order of how like things happen never <laughs> I never ever go in order. I just talk, start talking what's on the top of my mind, what comes first. But I hope you guys enjoyed the book. If not, comment down below what you disliked or what you loved if you loved it. And I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!